Hey YouTubers, it's Numistaka back with you today after Easter. Hope you had a great Easter weekend. Um, in the UK here, it is a bank holiday Monday, so it means that uh, we're all still slacking and enjoying ourselves. And, uh, and what better way to spend Easter Monday than to enjoy ourselves with this spectacular, massive monster gold coin. You may have seen uh, a while back this coin arrive and uh, seen the unboxing. Uh, this coin took three or four attempts to get it right by the Royal Mint. It was supplied by the coin connection to a customer and it was reminted by the Royal Mint about three times because of problems with minting. So it was specially reminted by the Mint for this customer. I believe the mintage of this coin is 50 overall maximum with 45 in the original special presentation units. So very low mintage, but it is a, a pretty specialist coin. It's quite a thick coin. You can see from the um, from the holder that it's pretty. It's a reasonably thick holder, and the coin goes almost to the edges of this size holder. So it's a nice chunk of gold. I don't know whether the raw mint would be better if they made a bigger diameter um, coin which was slightly less chunky and it may kind of look more for the money. Um, gets a tiny bit lost in this great big holder. Um, the holder could take even up to a kilo of gold um, and I still think NGC do need a, mi a midi size holder for slightly smaller coins that are over the normal 50 millimeter diameter. So uh, still time to use the Coin Connection promo code. Here it is. If the Easter Bunny is carrying coins for your collection this Easter, then why not save an extra 2% on anything you buy till the 30th of April 2019? Use this code at checkout, BUNNY. That's BUNNY. So if you guys have got some time to spend and you're relaxing on Easter Monday and you've had enough of eating Easter eggs, then uh, spend some time taking a look at some coins that have been returned uh, from NGC in London in the UK. So, uh, in fact, this little box here that I've picked up is uh, awaiting uh, other coins coming back for customers. So that's not anything new. You'll have seen some of those coins before. However, there are a number that I picked up the other day from, um, from NGC in London. Uh, at the moment, you have to personally drop off and pick up uh, coins so that um, you know there's no postal service at the moment. So the first ones that uh, I've got to show you are these undated 20 pence pieces. So these are regular circulation um, coins. And the person who sent these in sent in four of them which gives us a great chance to take a look at the way NGC grade these coins and treat them because all four came up with different, uh, different grades. So uh, 62, this one had a scratch, so it came up as a details grade. Um, there was a 58. And you can see that, I guess, they have a much better chance of comparing them and giving better grades, I think, when they probably get more of these coins together, a 61. So a 58, a 61, a 62, and also a scratched one as well. Four different grades, four different coins, and you can see they put the date in parentheses to show that um, the date isn't actually on the coin, but it's kind of inferred because we know these coins came out in 2008, and the point is they don't have a date on them at all. So uh, they were uh, error coins. Next up, we've got uh, our friend, the, uh, the Legend of the Ravens again. Uh, this one is 1.17 ounces of gold. Um, the other one that you saw at the beginning had five ounces of gold. This one is roughly 1,900 odd pounds, maybe 2,000 pounds from the Royal Mint. 
The first one is probably about 8,500 or so from the raw mint in pounds. If you want to get dollars, multiply by 1.25 at the moment, roughly, or 1.3, and you'll see how many US dollars um, you had to pay for one of these coins. This one is interesting. This is the 2017 uh, Matt coin. You'll have seen yesterday my coin of interest. Uh, it's basically the same as this coin, but with a plain rim and Victoria's crest that's coming out on the 24th of May. If you haven't had a chance to look at that video yet, then look at it. But um, I've had a few of these ones graded. There was, I think, 15,000 or so in a special presentation. But I didn't buy any of these myself because they wouldn't put a mintage limit on. I don't believe they will print mint anymore, but they didn't put an upper limit on. I never like to see that. Uh, on these coins, I always like to know in advance, if it's not a bullion coin, what the upper limit on the mintage actually is. And here's another one, which is a uh, commemorative coin. This is a two pound coin. So two pound coins have roughly half an ounce of gold in them. These cost roughly 800 pounds. So, um, you know, almost $1,100 or so uh, from the Royal Mint when you're buying them. When this one came in, I thought it was quite interesting. It's the uh, Lightning 2, but I like the way they've made the clouds kind of shimmer with the way they've, uh, they've minted the, uh, the bit, uh, the sky area. I think that's pretty clever. Uh, pretty low mintage on this uh, Lightning 2 coin from the Royal Mint. So uh, let's pop that one back and uh, close this box up and see what other coins came back from NGC in London. The, um, the coins come back slightly differently from NGC in London. When they come back by post from the States, they're all kind of sealed up, so we all get to see them at the same time. Um, when they come back via London, then I have to go there and make sure that I'm happy with each coin first. So they can't get completely unboxed uh, in the way that the American ones uh, can do. So this first one here got a details grade, unfortunately, for a little kind of uh, cleaning or scratching or something. But then it is a very, very old coin. So you can uh, make some allowances for that. It's a, a DRAM. And they thought the obverse had a little scratch, although I think that's quite a nice coin. This one I uh, had a special interest in because this one is my coin. I bought this, uh, I bid for it at an auction uh, at the coin cabinet. Um, it was on bidder, B-I-D-D-R dot C-H auction site, which uh, works together with the coin cabinet for auctions. Um, the picture that they put up on the site was really good. I hadn't seen the coin in person. Um, it looked to me a little bit better in the pictures than uh, the 55 that it got. I, I, I hope that it would have got a 58 based on the pictures, but it got a little bit under that in terms of the actual grading. Probably, um, you know, the moral of that story is that you should always go and see coins that are being auctioned if you can before you actually bid for them. But uh, very, very nice 1826 half crown coin. And as you probably know from previous videos, I've been collecting 1826 kind of era coins uh, up to 1830, 1836, 1837, George IV and William IV, which I'm particularly interested in. And this one's a fun one. If you remember this, when it came in originally, uh, this is a platinum coin, 2004, celebrating the Entente Cordiale. And the distinguishing feature about this coin is it is three ounces of platinum. So it has to be in a slightly wider holder to actually get all three ounces of platinum crammed in there. Uh, I know platinum's had a hard time recently. At one stage, platinum was, what, $1,700 odd an ounce. Now it's around about uh, $1,000 an ounce. Um, I think it's a reasonable buy at these, at these particular levels. Although uh, you never really know with platinum because, uh, you know, it, uh, it is a partly an industrial metal as well as an investment metal. Back to Bombay in 1818. This was the only year in Victorian times, at least up to 
2013 that the Bombay Mint uh, produced a sovereign. France, 1910, 20 francs in gold. And I, I know it's a little bit infantile, but I always get a bit more of a thrill when there's a little plus or a star on the number grading for one of the coins that I submit. You know, the, the plus one means that it didn't quite make the next grade, but it's right at the top there of whatever was acceptable for the grade that it got, which was a 66, which is in itself an extremely good grade for one of these coins. So it's not a rare coin, but it's rare in that grade. This one didn't do so well, unfortunately. Uh, it is a tiny bit kind of shiny, and uh, it, uh, was, it was borderline when I, went, I, when I put it in, but actually... Uh, it was a cleaned coin and had been, you know, you can see it's kind of been a little bit kind of polished up there over the years. Not as bad as some of the ones that I've seen, but certainly uh, a little bit cleaned and polished. So uh, let's see what's in the last batch of coins, which is a slightly bigger batch. So we've got a few coins, and these were in, I think, a, a value or a value um, tier. So a value tier is coins that generally have a value of less than $300 per coin. You can declare them at less than $300. If they're more than that, they have to go into what's called the standard tier at NGC. So, uh, and you tend to find that, uh, you know, coins that are not modern go into this value tier. You know, if it is 1955 or later, it'll go into modern. And if it is 1955 or earlier and it's less than $300, it'll go into value. But there are a lot of, uh, a lot of nice coins here. So this 1899 sixpence got a good grade. 1924 sixpence also uh, got a nice grade, a 61. And there's lots of people who collect these pre-decimal coins. On Facebook, there are many, many groups of collectors that get together and buy and sell these coins. And if you're looking for an area of collecting which has um, a massive amount of interest without a massive amount of cost uh, or need for massive investments, then I think that this has got a lot to recommend it. There are some great catalogues, including the new Bull, Bull Book, uh, English silver coinage, uh, lots of information, lots of very helpful uh, dealers that love these coins, and it certainly makes a really, really nice collection focusing on these silver and copper coins from Great Britain. And, uh, you know, it's nice to see that it doesn't all have to be gold. I think a lot of people, including myself when I started a few years ago, were kind of fixated on gold as the metal to have, but there is a massive amount of interest uh, in silver and copper coins as well. Uh, and I think there's a lot of history and a lot of uh, variety in these coins. And it's always possible to find new varieties that haven't yet been graded or even haven't, yet haven't been in the catalogues, rare overdates, um, die numbers, you know, whatever it happens to be, uh, you can find them in these pre-decimal English coinage. Most of the coins uh, I put in did, did reasonably well, or as expected. This is William IV, 1934, uh, half crown. For those of you who haven't been watching pre-decimal stuff, half crown is two shillings and sixpence. Uh, so in today's money, about 12 and a half pence, which is about, uh, I don't know, 18, 20 cents or something like that. But in these days, you know, it was, uh, it was a nice chunk of money that you could probably go out and have a great time in the evenings. One of the reasons I particularly like these, um, these coins from this era is I love the ornate shields that you get in the designs. So from about 1820, 1821 up to 1837, I think you get some of the most beautiful shields uh, in the back of these coins. This one uh, was put in uh, obverse spot removed, uncirculated, and uh, it's the, the veiled portrait, not quite as popular as the young portrait of uh, 
Victoria and you can see uh, a little bit where that spot was removed and I'll show you that coming up in a little bit more of a close-up. Still very nice beautiful shields in the Victorian period but I don't think quite as nice as in the uh, William the William IV uh, and the George IV period. If you look, look just by REG down the bottom I think that's where the spot was removed so you can see it's a little bit kind of rubbed where they've taken something out or treated it and been a little bit too harsh in that and that has got it a details grade unfortunately. This one 1917 nicely nice coin very nice coin but they think that it was cleaned at some stage. Um, you can't really see any huge nasty you know hairlines and cleaning marks on this but but obviously it uh, was cleaned a little bit too vigorously for NGC's liking, so unfortunately they did give it a detail grade. So last one for you in this video. I hope you're still with me, taking a look at these beautiful coins. 1904, it got a details grade, so you know maybe it could have done a bit better than that, but still a very nice coin, nice condition shield on the back. I hope that um, you've, you've found that I've presented you with a whole variety of coins. I tried to put together um, some things which uh, would be there for everybody. Something old, something new, something shiny, some ravens, lightning, lots of interest, hopefully. And, uh, and there will be another mega grading or mega results video set coming out soon because there's another box on its way back from FedEx. Hope you like that. Please like, subscribe, and let me have your comments.